in this session we'll discuss about the electric fields due to continuous charge distribution before discussing about the electric fields due to continuous charge distribution let us consider a distribution of point charges let's say q1 q2 qn as shown in this figure these point charges are located at r1 dash r2 dash and rn dash so the field at point p which is given by the vector r, r due to this uh, charges q1 to qn is given by this expression this is obtained by using the principle of superposition now let us consider a continuous volume charge distribution consider a region which is given something like this so this region consists of charge distribution so examples for this kind of charge distribution is the uh, it may be a charged gas now our aim is to determine the field at this point p due to this continuous volume charge distribution so in order to determine the field at this point p due to this entire volume charge distribution let us first consider a differential volume element dv dash so if uh, rho v is the volume charge density at this point then the differential charge in this volume element is given by rho v dv dash so with respect to the origin let's say this uh, volume element is uh, located at r dash and uh, the observation point is at r the electric field that is the differential electric field at point p due to this differential charge dq is given by rho v dv dash divided by so this expression gives the electric field at point P due to the differential charge dq here the charge dq is considered as a point charge this is very very important now here this term which is the differential charge dq is considered as a point charge so this is nothing but the electric field due to a point charge now to obtain the electric field at point p due to the entire volume charge distribution we can integrate the above expression over the entire source distribution
So the electric field due to a volume charge distribution can be obtained by using this expression. In many practical cases, the charges may be distributed over a surface. For example, the charges are distributed over the surface of conductors. So if we want to determine the electric field at point P due to this surface charge distribution, then we have to consider a differential surface element ds. And if uh, sigma s is the surface charge density at this point, then the differential charge dq within this element is given by sigma s ds. We will treat it as ds dash. Now again the field at this point P due to this differential charge dq which is again considered as a point charge is given by de is equal to And the electric field at the point P due to the entire surface charge distribution is obtained by integrating the above expression. So the integration is carried out over the entire surface charge distribution. Similarly, we can determine the electric field at a, at a point P due to a line charge distribution. So in this case, the charge is distributed along a thin wire. Again this problem can be solved by considering a differential length dl dash. So if uh, lambda l is the charge density per unit length that is coulomb per meter then the charge within this element is given by lambda l dl dash. Now again this charge dq is treated as a point charge and the electric field at point P is given by that is due to this charge element lambda l dl dash is given by So this gives the expression for the electric field at point P due to this differential charge dq. Now the electric field at this point P due to the entire line charge is obtained by integrating the above expression for the entire length. 